Good evening. Uh, thanks for having us all tonight. Good to see uh, many of you uh, that come to the town hall meetings I've held in this room and next door uh, over the course of the last few years. I'm Jim Lemunyan. I'm completing my second term uh, in the House of Delegates. My wife Robin and I have been uh, 30 year residents of Northern Virginia, 22, uh, up the road in Franklin Farm. Our uh, three children are uh, all out of the house now. We're empty nesters of about a month ago, but they were all graduates of uh, Oakton High School. Uh, we were in Oakton family for eight years. Uh, I've been in business most of my adult life. I uh, started a semiconductor materials company that was sold to Dow Corning, one of the largest semiconductor materials companies in the world about 10 years ago. Helped another startup get off the ground since then. And then my day job right now is uh, membership development, really marketing and sales for a government trade association uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, in the two uh, terms that I've served in the House of Delegates, uh, I've been fortunate to uh, I have 24 bills that I introduced that I authored, not including other ones that I co-sponsored, but 24 bills become law. All, every one of them on a bipartisan basis through the House and Senate. It won't surprise many of you who follow what I've done that uh, my focus is on transportation uh, and education issues. Uh, and that's what most of those bills have to do with. <coughs> Three things I want to say about transportation, kind of where we've been, where we've gone. Um, when I uh, was first elected in 2009, I said we need more money. We've got to be able to set priorities because there'll never be an unlimited amount of money. And the priority ought to be what's going to give us the biggest bang for the buck in terms of congestion reduction. And third is how do we better synchronize land use and our transportation system? Uh, I think we've, we've on a policy stand from a policy standpoint, a legislative standpoint, we've made a lot of progress on one and two. I carried a bill in 2012 that actually requires VDOT to set up a rating system and make that information public. That's in progress. Dave Marsden, who you may know in the Senate, carried the Senate version of that bill. Uh, in fact, the uh, VDA is making a presentation about that bill tomorrow night before the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority and the implementation uh, of it. Synchronizing, I think we, we still need to do better. I introduced a bill that became law that said that VDOT gets an opportunity to comment on every uh, change to a comprehensive plan. These are the, the, the comprehensive land use plans in Northern Virginia, and to comment on, a, on the congestion reduction or the congestion impact, whether it creates more or creates less. Doesn't require local government officials to take that advice into account, but at least the information is available for them and, and the, uh, the general public. Uh, in the brief amount of time I have, I won't go into detail on education other than to mention, because many folks don't know, that Fairfax County Schools are getting a record amount of money from Richmond in the current two-year budget. The two-year budget that we have now that has more than a billion dollars for Fairfax County Public Schools. We tend not to micromanage that money. We don't earmark it for one thing or another. We have an elected school board. It's their responsibility to do that. We made a couple of exceptions for incentives for more science and math teachers, uh, for school safety, and as Tom mentioned, we had the matching money for uh, the teacher pay hike. Uh, I've been endorsed by the Virginia Education Association. In fact, uh, out of 140 members in the House and uh, the Senate, uh, eight or nine of us were, get, were designated as legislative champions, and it was my privilege to, uh, to receive that award. Uh, earlier in the year. Uh, third area I want to mention is, uh, is good government and government reform. It's a bit of an all-encompassing idea, but the thing to mention is that we in Virginia have a balanced budget. We are not accumulating debt for future generations to pay. Uh, the folks about 25 miles across the river, and it's, uh, it's something that I vote for and would expect to continue uh, to vote for. Uh, in going forward, since I only have a limited amount of time, I just want to second the comments that have been made on ethics reform. I'm confident that that will be done in the 2014 session. Uh, still details will be worked on exactly what kind of reporting, what kind of things are acceptable or not. Uh, oversight on transportation and education. We've done a lot of legislating in the last four years in both those areas. One of my frustrations with Congress is to keep passing bills year after year after year and then stop to look back and say, well, it felt good when we passed that, but it really, did it really do any good? And I think we in Virginia got to be different really look back and monitor the implementation of these legislative changes we've made both on transportation and education to make sure uh, that we're getting results. And finally, on the idea of, of, of what else can we do for jobs and economy. As Tom mentioned, we, we did get that, that great rating from Forbes today. It's not by accident. We really uh, focused on that in a number of ways the last four years. I think the biggest untapped area of public policy uh, for improving our climate for business is tax reform, both on the individual side and on the personal side. We have, they mentioned too many incentive, too many disincentives in the tax code that still continue to make 
businesses hesitate to move here or new companies to start and grow. So thank you for the opportunity to speak and look forward to answering your questions.